Hello, my name is Jeb Sherrill, and I am not a guitar teacher. But I am obsessed with patterns. I mean like really obsessed with patterns. <laughs> Hello fellow chair players and prospective chair players. My name is Jeb Sherrill and this will be a fairly quick episode because all we're going to do is expand the shape a little bit. Now remember, part of the reason we use this chair shape is because it's asymmetrical. And if we added this extra note right here, it would be symmetrical. And so it would be a little harder to see it in our, or rather, not just in our minds, but on the fretboard as we work up and down it. So I've showed you these two extra notes in other contexts before. For instance, they are on this full chair system, but I'm going to show them to you in a really simple way because today we're just using one chair, one single black chair, and you're just going to expand that shape just a little bit because this is kind of how we do this. We have the one shape, the chair shape, and then we see how the notes connect to it and we sort of memorize them as other shapes, shapes over this shape. And in this case, all we're doing is looking at the back of the chair because along the back of the chair is always going to be one note above, one fret above, and one note, one fret below. Now, you see, it might be trickier if you had to memorize one two, three, four, five notes when you're somewhere else on the fretboard. It's kind of easy right here, but it's it will become one of these rules that you'll just automatically know in your head. Whenever you see the back of a chair, and I'm sure a lot of you already just see these on your fretboard, a lot of you probably already see that note right there and that note right there because I've covered them before but now you'll see them in relation just to the back of the chair. And this is also where the chairs will start fitting together. Why? Well, because first of all, this note is the seventh, or it's the major seventh, or it's the minor second, the relative minor's second. And this note down here is the same as this little invisible note right here. It's actually a C which is the major fourth or the minor sixth. So anytime you look at the back of a chair, you're going to know not only there's another note down here, but it's a note that's up here. And what that's going to do is that's going to start making you play more efficiently. Because for instance, if you are playing in this part of the chair and you need this note up here, yeah, you. You could go up there, but you could just go right there. And this starts fitting them together. Because if you were to use one of the bridges that we have at the bottom of all chairs, you would find what's down there. Remember, there's always a two above and below a three and a three above and below a two. So if we follow this bridge down here, we know we have two. Not only do we know we have two, but they are the two which are right there. So that tells us that is identical to. So this starts putting in our brains how the notes repeat because this whole system is made for guitar. It's, it's made to make the guitar more efficient for you as you play across the neck knowing where the notes are going to be closer, if that makes any sense. So. The simplest thing to do is just, just play as you have been playing up and down the chair and now you'll just start memorizing. Okay, there's another note above the chair and there's another note below the chair and what that note is. And this is going to start bringing it together. It's going to start collapsing the shapes, which is what you're wanting. Eventually you want to collapse the shapes because that's going to make you play really efficiently and really easily, or at least that's the hope. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I really appreciate all you guys who watch.